All right. Well, one of the most popular shows on Netflix right now is called Dancing for the Devil. It is a documentary series that details an accused cult called 7M and the Shekinah Church. Its founder, Robert Shin, attracted well-known TikTok dancers, including two sisters from here in Michigan. And it was the Wilking family from the Warren area that called 7M into question on a social media post that went viral. They went live on Instagram, claiming that their daughter, Miranda, cut them off and that Shin was controlling. Go ahead and take a look. When he found the dancers, he saw all this opportunity to be like a world famous social media talent manager. Social media, it was new. Like, man, I can do this and get money for my art. I want to do this. He would always share whenever someone would get a deal. All this money, it's all going to Robert. It started out fairly innocuous, but the control slowly grew. I could be in an unsafe environment. This is a cult. They would say, like, cut off your family because you need to work on yourself. You have to die to your family in order to save them. As a man of God, I wasn't thinking that he would ever do anything wrong to me or someone. When you raise somebody, and all of a sudden to see a shell of your daughter, I don't know who this person is. There were these sleuth accounts popping up. Former members were saying people suffered in his church for decades. I felt so betrayed. It was awful. I want Robert to never be able to do this ever again. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. You know, that's from the trailer there. That documentary tells stories that Shin had aspiring dancers hand over their fees and cut off contact with their friends and family. You know, this is the second cult documentary that's come out in recent times with ties to Michigan. Of course, Twin Flames Universe is still operating in northern Michigan. All right, joining me now from Los Angeles is Rick Ross. He is the founder of the nonprofit called Cult Education Institute. He is an author. He's a cult deprogrammer. Rick, I'm so glad that you're with me to uh, talk about this today because this these documentaries really have so many people talking. As we jump into this, uh, just so we're all on the same page, explain for us the difference between a cult and maybe a religious movement. We saw that Robert Shin is uh, the head of the church with the Shekinah Church. Well, Christy, first of all, there is the presence of an absolute authoritarian leader who has no meaningful accountability to anyone. Uh, there's no financial transparency. There's no checks and balances, no bylaws to uh, in any way put a check on the power of the leader. And the leader becomes the defining element and driving force of the group, and members worship the leader. Second, that leader uses identifiable techniques of thought reform, coercive persuasion, to gain undue influence over the members. They act against their own best interests, but consistently in the best interests of the leader. And then finally, if it's a destructive cult, the leader is using undue influence to exploit and do harm to his or her followers. So you take those three things together, and that is the core of what defines a destructive cult. Very different from organized religion, uh, where there is often democratic governance and accountability. When we see documentaries about something like 7M and then also the Twin Flames universe that is out there, it's obviously attracting a lot of interest. Would this lend us to think that there are more cults out there or they're just getting more attention? Well, Christy, I've been doing my work for 40 years and I would say there are more groups out there today than I've ever witnessed in four decades. I would attribute this largely to the fact that uh, the cult business is a good business from the standpoint of making money. And if you can put your conscience and morality aside as a cult leader, which these leaders often do, uh, you can make yourself very rich from running a cult. Uh, in, and also what we see with the advent of social media and the internet is the proliferation of groups online and their ability to target anyone with an electronic device that is online. Uh, so anyone could be targeted in their home, at work, wherever, and recruited through any number of social media platforms, which are then used to indoctrinate and even get money from people involved. Rick, are there any more people that are more susceptible to being brought into a cult? You know, we, we heard in this documentary about 7M, these were rising entertainers. They were looking for a break, and it was easy for them to get swayed. But are, are there certain, I guess, maybe tactics or people in particular that are targeted for cults? 
Well, the, Christy, there's no particular profile, but there is a kind of narrative that pulls through many of the cases that I deal with. That is that the individual is going through a difficult time. Uh, that um, at that difficult point in their life, they have the bad luck to run into a destructive cult, uh, which could be a friend, a co-worker, someone they know and trust who approaches them about a group that they know little, if anything, about. And then in that process of recruitment, we need to keep in mind that it is very deceptive. Uh, no one knowingly joins a destructive cult. Uh, they are misled and they are led to believe instead that this is a, a positive group, a group that can answer some of their uh, questions about life uh, and help them. Uh, in the case of the 7M group, uh, Robert Shin has portrayed himself as someone who can make them stars, who can literally cultivate them into celebrities that then will make a great deal of money and be very successful. And people in the entertainment industry who are seeking success are often, often very vulnerable to someone like Robert Shin. Rick, is it hard to prove that something actually is a cult? You know, we saw all, all along here that Miranda Derrick was still active on social media. And you saw people commenting that she seemed fine, that maybe this was just a choice that she was making, that it was her, her you know, original family that maybe was the problem in this one. What should be, or how can people call that into question? Well, Christy, I think that what you see in the case of 7M and the Shekinah Church is social isolation. And the consistent uh, theme is isolating people from old friends, family, uh, family estrangements being a common complaint. So what you see is despite uh, the protestations of the group, you look at the behavior and the dynamics of the group. How have they affected the individual involved? Are they still meeting with family and old friends? Are they isolated? In the case of 7M, uh, members are often housed with other members. And the church, interestingly, is attended by invitation only. I mean, these are, in my opinion, red flags. Uh, that is, can you criticize the leader? Can you raise questions about the leader? How is it affecting your social life? How, it is, mm -hmm. how is it affecting your finances? These are the building blocks of looking at a group, not based on what they say they believe, but how they behave and how they affect people's lives. I know you talk about deprogramming, helping people coming out of a cult. How difficult is this? And when you see other you know, former members talking about it in a documentary like 7M. Well, in an intervention to get someone out of a group, and I've done hundreds of interventions over the years, the key is to getting them to unplug from the group for a period of time, where they have to think independently, deal with uh, their family, deal with uh, what has happened. And so the first step is persuading someone to take a break and sit with family, old friends, and talk about their concerns. And in this process, uh, look at what defines a destructive cult, the characteristics that I spoke about. Also, what is undue influence? How does coercive persuasion work? Why is your family so worried about you? And what is there about this group that you may not know that you should know to make a more informed decision about your future? Uh, these are questions that the cults uh, separate people from family and friends so that they won't hear those questions and so that they won't be able to reflect upon them and and talk to their family directly. So the control of information, the control of the environment through social isolation is a key to the control that cults used, used to keep people uh, under their sway. A lot of great information here. Rick Ross, the founder of the Cult Education Institute, of course, an author. Um, we will have so much information linked on our website at clickondetroit.com. Really appreciate your time today. Thanks so much. Thank you, Christy.